Good morning and welcome. I am delighted that you've chosen to spend a bit of your day today with me in our virtual Yale School of Management. Um, I'm Cindy Cornell. I'm the career coach for working professionals. I work with both our alumni and our matriculating MBA for executive students. And today we're going to talk about the hidden job market. First things first, I want to make sure that you actually focus on this time together. If you're looking for a job, if you're in the market, um, this is a, I think, very powerful hour for you. I will have uh, time at the end to answer your questions. So uh, if you do have questions throughout, um, please don't hesitate to put them in the question and answer box. And if you have a personal question that I might start to touch on today, but perhaps don't follow through with fully, you're welcome to make an appointment with me um, through the careers page on the alumni portal, and I'm happy to have that conversation with you one-on-one. -on -one. So I wanna to talk to you today about hiring and where the jobs are, where to find them. So kind of four sections today, um, how hiring happens, just giving you an overview so that you can think about it from the employer point of view. I'm then gonna talk about how you can be noticed, strategies and tactics, and actually, it's not just about being noticed. It's more so about being remembered in a really positive way. Then we'll go into a quick summary, wrap up, and talk about a few resources. And then I'll have time for you at the end to uh, go through um, whatever questions you have. And our target completion is going to be a few minutes before the top of the hour so that we're able to um, get on to whatever we have going on next. So the first thing I want to share with you is uh, just a reminder that hiring is still happening. Uh, there are great out there that are doing work. They're doing it differently than they have in the past. Uh, they're responding to new trends and they can't do it by meeting people in some of the traditional way. Um, you really have to think about how do you get into that company? How do you build trust and rapport without actually being able to physically with someone and sit with them across the table. So referrals matter even more. And I also wanted to remind you that um, there are in fact new processes for the hiring companies. So the processes that they've done in the past and kind of the channels that they've used in the past may, cha may change. Um, the last point that I want to kind of point out here on this slide is that hiring is now for many companies becoming totally virtual and we have geographically diverse competition. So if jobs can be done in different places, again, I want to open your mind up to the fact that it doesn't have to be a company in your town or in your close geographic area, you could be competing against people globally, or at least across um, whatever the country is that you're actually in. Um, so that's, you know, both a, a challenge and, um, and a benefit, because you have a potentially more opportunity um, you also, though, know you need to work a little bit more, a little bit harder to make sure that you are thoughtfully differentiated from the rest of the competition that's out there. Referrals are and have been, even before the coronavirus and COVID-19 and social distancing, they have been the leading source for superior candidates for 88% of employers. Referred candidates are generally found to be a better culture fit than people found through other sources. So again, this is really important for you to kind of think about in this, in this search. Um, if you are focused on traditionally um, going through and responding to job postings, you're missing a lot. And we're gonna get into this a little bit later. Um, the other piece I wanted to kind of share with you just as we start to think about how hiring is, is perhaps different than it has been in the past, the jobs of tomorrow are really unlikely to look like the jobs of today. My job, for example, a coach, a career coach, didn't exist when I was graduating college or even really when I was graduating from my MBA 20 years ago. This is a relatively new profession. Um, and if you think about um, the te technology jobs and the internet boom and bust and the finance um, crash of 2008, the jobs that showed up after are very different than the jobs that showed up prior. So I would expect the same thing here as we are moving through COVID and social distancing, what companies are going to be seeking, what consumers are going to be desiring are going to be different and therefore the jobs are going to adjust as well. 
Um, I want you to think about riding this wave, being on the front of it, as opposed to um, being, you know, kind of caught up and, and, and uncertain about, um, you know, kind of what's going to happen and, and, and feeling um, out of control, frankly, um, with the whole process. So let's talk about this, you know, kind of riding the wave and, and being in control versus not being in control, kind of going along with this metaphor. Um, if you've ever gone to the gone to the sea and gone to the ocean and and kind of ridden the waves, body surfed, um, sometimes you catch them, and um, and sometimes you get thrown down and you're kind of tossed around and you hit the bottom and it's really uncomfortable and you come up sputtering for air. And I think that's what the job search feels like for a lot of people: um, out of breath, um, uncomfortable. Um, if you are an accomplished surfer or bodyboarder. Um, people know that you can sometimes kind of have to wait for the right wave and not all waves are for you. So really to know what you're looking for and think about what control you have of the process. Um, just because the job is in front of you doesn't mean you have to actually apply for it. Just because the company might express interest in you doesn't mean it's necessarily the right company and culture fit for you. So um, I really want you to think about your focus. We get what we, um, what we seek. Um, mindset matters and your, inter your internal dialogue is really gonna influence how your job search goes. Along these lines, I want you to also think about through a search, being really kind with yourself, being thoughtful about um, what you need to be your best, um, physical and mental health, um, allocating time for your personal and professional growth, being confident um, about your skills and abilities through you know, kind of practicing them and things like that. Job search, done right is really a full-time job and we always need to have balance in our lives so it can't just be that so please kind of hold time for um things that make you they get that energize you and make you happy so that when you actually are in front of your target companies you're able to be the very best version of yourself so let me talk about our title the hidden job market jobs aren't actually hidden they're all around us and I just want to talk a little bit about kind of how we traditionally think about job searching and how I'd like you to start thinking about job searching. Um, a hiring manager has a need. And that manager and that company, maybe the team might be talking about what they need and who they need and what skills they need. They're, somebody's you know, kind of up at night with a problem that they can't solve by themselves, they can't solve internally. And that's why they're looking outside for somebody like you. If you're well-networked, that hiring manager might think about you before they even post the job, before they even talk to a recruiter. And oftentimes companies have to go through a formal review process, a formal hiring process internally and externally. But if you are top of mind from the very beginning, if you're referred in, you get to circumvent a lot of that and, you, and you're kind of the lead horse all the way through. So really thinking about being in the right place at the right time. Um, if you do this, if you're kind of out there and people know what you're about, um, and we'll talk about this a little bit more later, um, you might not even be looking for the job when it pops up. And that's a pretty cool thing. My job here at SOM, I wasn't in fact looking for a job at all. I was working on my own and a colleague of mine who's not in the coaching industry, who's actually in the, in the finance industry, heard about it and made my referral. And six weeks later, which is really fast for a hiring process, I was sitting in my office at SOM and I received my first paycheck. It was crazy um, how quickly it went and it was all by referral. So Again, thinking about where you have, where you want to plug in, where you can plug in. So um, being a great um, candidate, letting people know what you want to do, letting you know, people who might be thinking about hiring, talking to companies, interviewing with um, informationally, um, demonstrating your, uh, your interest and your skills, um, great to do at the company level, great to do with recruiters great to do with other people and companies that are maybe able to refer in their friends and family. Um, and then also great to do, um, you know, with our SOM colleagues and such, because you never know where these opportunities are going to come from. You 
are a solution to that problem. I mentioned a few minutes ago, somebody's up at night, somebody's awake trying to figure out how to fix things. This is so critically important to this type of job search. Um, use another metaphor with you. I think all of us have at one point or another gone to the supermarket when we're hungry or gone to a buffet when we're hungry. What's pretty funny about that is we typically either overeat and don't feel great afterwards, or we go to the supermarket and we buy hundreds of dollars worth of stuff, and yet we come home and we don't have everything we need. That's kind of like the approach to a job search, where if we're not really clear about what we're looking for, what we're seeking, we're going to get a lot of stuff that really doesn't add a ton of value and doesn't really make us happy. So for you to think about why you're here, thinking about what the, what the, what the solution is that you want to present, um, in earlier webinars, I talked about kind of your zone of genius where you're intersecting with things that you love to do and things that you're really good at. That's your offer. Just because you can do something doesn't mean you should. I, in fact, have an MBA in finance from NYU. I don't want to do the Black-Scholes option pricing model anymore. I'm good at it. I was paid very handsomely to do it. It didn't make me happy the way doing this type of work makes me happy. So for you to think about what you love to do what gives you energy, what you're known for, what you'd like to be known for, and really beginning to cultivate that message out into the world. Um, and again, I, you'll hear about this if you think about um, reimagining your career in 2020. Um, I talked about this a little bit in the networking webinar I did um, a few months ago. And there's also some other CDO webinars. I've done some on branding and bullet points. So those might also help you to, to uh, clarify your purpose, clarify what your offer is so that people can find you. So your career capital is something that you own, you define, and you put out there to the world. And um, it has an economic value. And for you to understand how do you add value to companies, how could you add value to companies relative to their process is really important. Companies care more about what they believe you can do for them than what you did for somebody else. And there's so many different ways to put together your skills in unique new ways to create value. I want you to kind of understand these transferable skills. And if we go back to what I shared a few moments ago about how things are changing, this is super important too, because what people have thought about and conceived in the past isn't necessarily what they're asking for going forward. So remember, you're not a job title. You are not limited by what you've done in the past. And you own this. It's your responsibility to convey how you'd like to leverage those previous skills uniquely in this new role. Um, being clear about even what industry um, is imperative to the successful search, because if people don't know what you're, con what you're wanting to con contribute and in what ways, it's really hard for folks to make those positive, powerful referrals we were talking about being so important a little while ago. Uh, create context for the reader by highlighting that intersection of your prior experience and success with your future goals and desired impact. And please be careful not to be overly loyal and in speaking of what you used to do in ways that are more resonant to your old employers than they are to your target companies. Um, a silly example, uh, I was in the UK some years ago on business with a colleague and we were in a coffee shop and they asked for black or white. And she stood there and she couldn't actually, you know, they're speaking English, but she couldn't order coffee in the UK because she didn't understand that white coffee meant with cream. So you really have to translate it to them. Um, another quick example is turnover. If you're talking to certain types of companies in certain uh, domiciled countries, turnover means revenue, not people. So you really need to translate thoughtfully what it is that that company understands in language that they use. Last thing I wanna talk about here is for you to leverage your strengths. If you have perceived gaps or if you have known gaps, let's address them and show that you know what they are and talk about through what you're doing in social media or what you're talking about with your um, colleagues in informational networking, um, that you're addressing them, that you're, you're taking action against them. Uh, and in fact, you're having conversations with people to learn more about them, be more conversant in those, in those issues. What we're trying to do is motivate people to open the door up for you. Um, you want to get in early. Better yet, you want to design the role that you're the solution for. 
your relationships. And again, I mentioned that I did a session on networking in the age of social distancing. Relationships are not transactional. This is so important. Even if you're having conversations about a specific opportunity for a specific company with somebody who might be in that department, please have it be more about the relationship. If they like you, they'll have a second or a third meeting. They'll make referrals to other people. Um, if you're transactional and they don't perceive that you care about them, they're not going to care much about you. So personal, authentic um, conversations uh, increase the likelihood of warm referrals. Again, remember that your referral or your introduction to somebody else through a colleague is a reflection on their brand. So unless you let them know by your own actions that you are going to honor their brand by showing up in a very positive way, reflecting on them, they're not going to take the risk with you if they don't know you. The other thing I want to remind you is all relationships are tended over time. What's important to those people? Google them. What do they care about? What are their not-for-profits not for that they might care about? Other interests? While you're at it, Google yourself. You might learn something about how you're being perceived and how the world sees you. So important, again, to think about these relationships. If you're not looking for a job right now, or even when you are um, in, happily in a new role, uh, to keep in touch with those people is going to help you because sometimes, as I mentioned earlier, I wasn't looking for a job when I found this one or when this one found me. So sometimes the coolest jobs, um, you know, come to you and you're not even looking for them. That's not going to happen, though, if you're not kind of keeping up with people and top of mind with them. Where do you find information? How do you kind of get clear about where the best opportunities might be? There's a lot of research that goes into this type of a job search. Um, and I want you to be thoughtful about, you know, kind of doing this for yourself. Um, I could give you just kind of a big list and I could put it on the, on the alumni website. In fact, all of these links are on the alumni website to make it really easy for you to kind of go through and, and click on them if you, if you need them. But the links and the information that's relevant for your search is something that you are going to come up with. So um, I had a conversation with uh, a, an alum recently who was talking about moving into a new industry. It didn't take me long and a, and a quick Boolean Google search to figure out who some of the um, top industry trade associations were. And sometimes those trade associations have job postings. Very useful to learn more about those companies and those jobs uh, by looking at things that are adjacent to and above or below things that you think you're interested in because then you really do get that understanding about how you fit in. And also thinking about um, the bigger pictures um, in this particular industry, we're actually speaking about cosmetics. And we dove into talking about, you know, kind of the technology and the chemistry that goes into that, fragrances and colors and um, formulations. And these were things that um, are conceivable, but until you actually adopt the language of the company or of the industry, uh, you're not going to show up as somebody who would really be a great candidate for that role. Lots and lots of places for information. And again, we can even have a conversation, a coaching conversation one-on-one -on -one to really refine um, your research process and, and identify if you're missing anything. I want you to, in your processes, in your branding, uh, to showcase in-demand skills, showcase the skills that you both want to share and that the companies that you want to work with need. Very important. Um, you might have technical examples and you may have managerial examples. So thinking about what the company needs, what they're dealing with right now, uh, what the challenges are that, um, that they're, they're facing and talking about translating your prior experiences into things that they're going to find helpful, they're gonna find useful, um, things that will help them sleep better at night is very important. So. Whatever you share needs to be, again, in their language. So important, and I know it's frustrating because it's a lot of work to do all of this. One resume does not fit all. We might come up with a resume with a number of bullet points and uh, stories. 
because again, a conversation is about the stories that you share and the bullet points are the previews to those stories. Um, those are going to be tailored for each opportunity because different companies are going to be asking you to come in potentially to play a different role. So thinking about what are your skills relative to their needs. How you approach this job search is a way to show people that you have the skills. You are the product. This is also quite interesting. I share with people all the time. Getting placed into the right organization is the problem to be solved, is the opportunity. You have these skills. You do these things for other companies, for other brands. These are some of your stories. I want you to think about it if you really kind of put yourself in the place of being the product or the opportunity. What would you do if it was a consulting project? What would you do if it was, um, if you were engaging in a, in a rigorous form of project management? Really kind of being a bit more objective about the process and, and also being empathy or empath empathetic about how is the other person um, experiencing this process you will help you to come up with language that's going to be more resonant with them. There's a great article that I reviewed as I was preparing for this session. It was a Business Insider article and it talked about the most in-demand jobs, um, job skills, and it also talked about um, LinkedIn hiring. So what was kind of cool about that was also looking at some of these skills. So some of them may be things that the company wants and you haven't actually demonstrated in quite those ways. That's okay. LinkedIn learning is, and Coursera and edX, and there's lots of other places where you can engage in um, learning platforms. Those are available for you to, you know, hone your skills and, and just get the language so that people understand that you, you understand their problems, their opportunities, their business. They're more willing to bring you in and train you up in their processes. So um, again, think about what are the skills that they need. And actually, let me give you one other point on this. Um, resumes, and I've shared this in other webinars, um, when they are prepared to kind of generic job descriptions, um, aren't memorable. And most job descriptions, or I'll just say many job descriptions, are poorly written by people who didn't do the job. So my example, my job description there were a whole bunch of things in it that aren't done by me. They're not even done in my department. They're not done in the CDO. They're done in other departments across SOM at, by people at my level across SOM. So if I was really looking through this job description and saying, can I do that? Can I do that? Can I do that? There are a bunch of things I can do, but I don't want to. Um, and if you were looking at it and saying, well, shoot, I can't actually you know, become a career coach at SOM because I don't have financial experience that would be required for financial aid reimbursement, reconciliations, things like that. That's not something that's part of my job, but it was in my job description. So this is another reason why you want to do your research about the company, about how you would fit into that organization and um, have conversations with folks to get clear about what the um, interactions are with other departments, et cetera, so that you can really understand the real skills and the real outcomes that are required that may not be articulately shared in that, in that description. So how do we find these jobs or how do we help these jobs find us? How, how, do we, how are we noticed? Um, it's again, through our relationships largely. You wanna nurture your relationships over time, not just when you need something. Mass emails are unlikely to be read and often come across as desperate. I want you to be personal. I want you to show them that you care about them and they're going to care about and remember you. Plant seeds. Sometimes the seeds for future opportunities take some time to germinate. They don't pop up right away. Um, Advocates, think about who these people might be, mentors, referrers, accountability partners. Who can actually make referrals to you or of you on your LinkedIn profile? And what would you like them to speak about that would help others to really know you well? 
the art of networking is one that you re that requires you to build these relationships over time and in a meaningful way. If done well, networking is a marathon, not something that you can rush. And again, please don't make it transactional. You're laying foundation for relationships so that people you're networking with will know who you are, what you want, what you provide, and, and it allows you to be top of mind so that when jobs become available, they think about you right away and they say, hey, you should talk to Kayla, you should talk to Cindy, you should talk to Steve. Don't forget to ask about them, even while you're in a search. One of the ways that when I started my private coaching business before I joined SOM, one of the ways I got great referrals was by having networking meetings with people, checking in with them, mentioning that I had launched this new practice, this new business, and then asking them about themselves. And they would share what they were, what they were up to. I let them know I was talking to lots of different people. And I was curious if there's anything that they were looking for, because I would, if I could, make referrals back to them. And through that generosity, I often received significantly more than I wound up giving. Um, but the, the receiving happened because I had the offer, because I had to give there too. You might be able to do something for them if you pay attention. So let me kind of contemplate how well you've been doing this. And if you've got some, you know, kind of questions about how to prepare for conferences or um, how to use some of the tools on LinkedIn, actually, there's a great course on LinkedIn. Um, I've talked about it in other webinars. It's landing the perfect job on LinkedIn. And there's a, a link for um, SOM alumni and students to um, take that course on our career um, resources page on the alumni portal. Outstanding course that talks about the AI of LinkedIn. It talks about... Um, the university tool and other research tools, the recruiter tool, how they're all used. This will help you to understand how to e find and reconnect with certain of your network and even how to expand into other groups and, um, and relevant, um, creating those other relevant connections. So we're talking about broadcasting your brand. And if you don't put yourself out there, again, it makes it really difficult for people to find you. If you broadcast well, as I mentioned earlier, the opportunities will come to you. You're not going to have to, you know, go out and post on, you know, look at the job boards every day and say, oh, there's nothing new or that's not quite what I want. And, you know, it's, it's a much more organic process. Um, and I want you to trust that there are great jobs out there. And through this networking, again, if companies say that 88% of quality hires come through referrals, um, know that you want to be one of those quality candidates that, that and, and to, to be referred, you have to, you have to be out there with, a, with messaging that is resonant and memorable. Your brand follows you, your brand precedes you, and it's been broadcast to people that you haven't even considered. Others you, uh, there's others yet that haven't received your signal because you're not on the same frequency. So again, thinking about their language, thinking about where they're looking for information, um, how they might be differently connected with you is, is helpful for you to adjust your strategy through this type of a job search. Sometimes also you're known for things that you don't even know that you're known for, um, that you don't credit as being noteworthy. Others find these things um, really powerful. So often good to get some feedback from trusted friends and colleagues, even when you're interviewing with people. When they say yes to your resume, when they say yes to a meeting, you can ask them, I'm so delighted to meet you. I'm curious, what about what I shared intrigued you enough to say yes and, and spending this time with me? And you're gonna get more information, more data points to understand what's resonant with people, what they're attracted to. And that is also really helpful for you in terms of tweaking and tailoring your marketing message to be more resonant to your targets. Again, I'm coming back to this idea of you have to have a target again, in order for this to work. Again, that big scatter shot, you know, I could do anything for anyone. You're probably not going to have a lot of success. And it's kind of like the buffet where um, when there's too many choices, um, you might not find the thing that actually is the most delicious to you and the best, the best match. So translation is key. Again, I've, I've shared this a bunch of times already. Don't please assume that people know you. Don't assume that they understand, even if they've worked with you, don't, under, don't, don't assume that they understand your job. Um, I know people that have worked in offices next to each other. 
they have different jobs. They're not all doing the same thing. So people have ideas and impressions about what you might do, uh, but they don't really know and they don't understand what goes into it and the effort and the preparation and the intricacies and the challenge that, that the challenges that you're proactively um, working through every day. Um, so really it's up to you to convey your message uniquely in a story way that piques people's interest and has them lean in and say, I'd like to learn more about that. Be personal to differentiate. Again, if we're dealing with potentially a more global diverse uh, population, there's more competition in certain ways. And, and I do really want you to understand what your superpowers are relative to the thing that you'd love to do and showcase those in ways that make it really easy for people to open doors for you and really easy for people to say yes to you and lean in. What do they really need? Again, I said this earlier, what, what's keeping them up at night? Showing them that you understand them and you are thinking about how you can help even before you get the job is, is powerful. I do want you to be easy to remember. Everybody's playing a matching game. Everybody's looking for something. And you know, people have a lot going on in their own lives. If you share in a way that's easy to remember, they're going to, in passing conversation, hear something and say, oh, you should call. Um, and also I want you to remember this idea of reciprocity and mutuality and relationship that you wanna keep track of what do other people need so you can be helpful to them. You wanna be a connector to stay high on people's go-to lists. This is a great uh, suggestion for people who are working with recruiters. And actually I did a recruiter webinar also early March. It was the first webinar I did when we moved to virtual. Uh, and um, one, of the, one of the tips that those recruiters um, shared is that you wanna be a connector. You wanna be somebody that they can trust to provide credible referrals, credible references. And if you're a person who adds value to conversation, um, who adds value to process, even if it's not something that directly benefits you, you're going to be somebody who's um, getting airtime when you do need something, when you are looking for an introduction, they're going to pick up the phone and say, yes, how can I help? Again, this idea of being targeted, being selective. Again, when you say I could do anything, the likelihood of getting any referrals or getting referrals that you would be even remotely interested in is decreased. If you are clear and somewhat selective, people might still come to you and say, this isn't exactly what you said that you wanted. And I think you could do it. Would you like to talk about it? Would you like to learn more about it? So the, the door remains open without having to, you know, kind of, or, and I'll say it remains open and people are more clear about what would delight you. Um, the cream rises to the top. Again, we're busy. We are bombarded with a lot of information every single day. Um, keep focused. Also, you can over network. This is important. Having intention and making sure that you have adequate time to research, to think about who you're talking to in advance, to um, Google them and figure out what they might have posted on LinkedIn or in other places in social media to understand what the challenges are in their organization or in their industry. Um, really important that thoughtful preparation in advance of a networking um, interview where people understand that you are well informed. And again, if they think that you are a low risk they are going and that you're going to reflect on them well, they're going to send you along to the next person and the next person. Um, so you can grow your network really organically and powerfully. Um, and then the other piece is the, the thoughtful power, uh, the thoughtful and powerful follow up. Again, if you over network and you don't have time, it's kind of like when people come back from conferences and they have a stack of business cards and you can't even remember who is who, um, it's not possible to thoughtfully and powerfully respond to everyone in ways that are memorable, in ways that are personal, in ways that show them that, that, they, that you care about them um, and that you would therefore be thoughtful and care about their business. So um, acknowledge and appreciate. I want to talk about that just a little bit more. Saying thank you is so important. And I do want you to think about acknowledging 
specifically for something that they did or they said in an interview or a networking conversation with you, or even if you happen to meet them in a socially distanced way or, um, you know, kind of out and about um, as, we're, as we're starting to open up and, um, and be able to see people. Um, I really enjoyed what you had to say about um, personally and professionally, this acknowledgement, this specific acknowledgement um, lets people know that they're resonant, that they're valuable and they have impact. And again, if they feel good when they're with you, they're gonna wanna spend more time and invest more time with you. Um, have intention about how you wanna be remembered. Thinking about does this message, is this language reflective of the things that I would like to be top of mind when they think of me? And if it's not yet, you might tweak it a little bit. So it's kind of a screen that you go through both before you start to write and after you write it to just check in and say, does this accomplish, does this strengthen my brand? Will this strengthen my relationship? And if it doesn't, let's go back and, and tweak it a little bit more until it does. You're mes messaging thoughtfully as well, reinforcing that focus, reinforcing your goals, reinforcing how you'd like to um, contribute to the world. And you can also follow up even well after and, and share things that you think that they might find useful. I know somebody who's in an active search currently and he actually has more time to research and look at what's going on in the world and, and on the web than do the people that have full-time jobs who are kind of responding to the chaos that's happening in their organizations. So he is proactively sharing articles that are relevant and resonant and even mention in some cases the companies that, that his targets are, are at that they've not seen and, and that is increasing and elevating his brand. While companies might have hiring freezes today, the minute that switch gets turned and they're ready to hire, they get the approvals, he's at the front of the line. So waiting until things are happening is again, kind of like waiting for the job post on LinkedIn. You're too late. So sharing, and one other tip here, reflect back another strategy that someone I was working with used was thinking about the job search that they were involved in and all of the people that had helped them along the way. And when they started to think about it and they wrote the list, they took the, uh, the tact back at Thanksgiving time to write those folks a note, letting them know where they were in the search and thanking them for their co contribution thus far to the search. And it was amazing in a time that's traditionally kind of quiet in hiring how busy their December was because people responded to the thank you note. They brought themselves up to the top, brought themselves up to, to top of mind and um, really were um, able to start the new year with some traction from conversations that happened, uh, powerful conversations that happened in December. If you're searching, it sometimes takes time and it's frustrating or it can be frustrating. I want you to take the time and use it to do things that are generative, that do things that give you energy, that help you to grow. Um, I remember having a conversation with somebody um, last year who had basically taken a two-year sabbatical. And what they had done was taken a break after finishing up, after wrapping up um, a, um, a piece of business and um, a relationship with a company that, that um, they had sold and they took a break and the break just extended. And when I remind them, right, reminded them that they had done some cool things and asked about some of the cool things that they'd done, we reframed this time off to a sabbatical where they were focusing on some different things that were important to them that frankly they hadn't had the time to focus that intently on while they were working full-time and, and they'd been working full-time for a really long time so that break and reframing it to the to the place that you know i was able to during the coronavirus really be with my family in a way that i wouldn't have been if i was working full-time i've heard some of the stories about how frustrating it is with internet bandwidth and where's everybody working and those types of things i was able to be present in a different way than i would have been able to um, if i were 
um, working full time remotely. Um, find your story and get used to saying it in a way that is believable and people will you know, respond to that. So the story that it's bad, that's in your head, is your story. Um, and, and you don't necessarily want other people to participate in that because that doesn't set you up as, as well as it could to be um, for you to be successful in your search. Um, if you do do some of these fun things, um, I know somebody who, um, again, was recently um, let go um, by their company as a result of economic downturns coming out of um, COVID-19 and, um, and the impacts to business. And I loved the point of view that, you know what, it gives me time to hike another peak. Um, it, it's something that, that is hard to schedule when you're working full time and easier to schedule and also quite a socially distanced um, uh, type of activity that, that is able to do you know, more easily now. So um, share what you're doing. Also, um, if you're taking LinkedIn courses or Coursera or edX courses, there's badges that you can add to your LinkedIn profile. You can post about some of these things on LinkedIn. Even articles that you're reading that you find really resonant and valuable, comment in ways that um, elevate your brand and are resonant and memorable and, and even shareable. Um, I shared an article a couple of weeks ago about networking and I'm still a little flabbergasted. It has gotten over 25,000 views on LinkedIn, which I've never shared an article like that. And it really speaks to how important networking is. So if you haven't seen that on my LinkedIn page, um, if, you, if you need help finding it, let me know and I'll direct you to the article. But it, a lot of people have, have peeked at it and found it useful. Um, the other thing I'd like to say on this, and, and we're getting to the end and, and uh, ready to you know, think about questions. So you know, if you do have questions, let's pop them into the question box so that I can respond to them. In this world where comfort with ambiguity and an ability to navigate through dynamic change with high levels of uncertainty is of paramount importance, how you show up to this process matters. So letting people know that you are moving through your search in a graceful way, letting them know that you're the type of person that they can count on to you know, be thoughtful and innovate and do things differently and be willing to, um, to stretch and, and, and you know, take risks and um, fail and try again, learn from those. That's powerful. Um, letting people know the types of conversations you're having with folks um, and what you're learning and that you're being in, in fact quite thoughtful and discerning about your search process and where you might like to add value next is a very different vibe than coming into somebody with a resume and saying, please like me, please, can I do this job for you? I, I like that job. Um, I think I'd be perfect for it and please pick me. Very different than, you know, kind of this I'm exploring and there's some things about what you're doing and what your company is doing that I'm finding really interesting and I'd like to learn more because I think I might be able to add value in this industry. And I'd love to think what, you know, if you find out what you think about it too. So um, think about how you're gonna own um, this process for yourself, even while you might at some point have this mindset going back to what we talked about at the very beginning where always me, this is being done to me. We're flipping it around and saying, I haven't figured it out yet and I'm really confident that I will. And I'm looking forward to, um, to what that looks like. Wrapping up, what are the best resources? Again, I mentioned this earlier, your own tailored search. And if you want some help figuring out what the tailoring looks like, um, please let me know. Um, I want you also to um, think about uh, what other webinars could be useful for you if you haven't actually peeked at them. Um, there's a number of them we're adding to um, the, the library we have. So you can have a peek at those maybe, and then reach back out and ask some more detailed questions later on. Um, there's SOM resume and cover letter resources on the, on the page, and I mentioned that course, Land the Perfect Job with LinkedIn. Um, with the link, it's actually free for our SOM community. So um, that's a great value um, and, and something that folks that even have good LinkedIn profiles have come back to me, and um, they've, uh, they've said that they have learned something that they didn't know and that was powerful and helping, helping them to, again, differentiate themselves and take themselves up just a little bit more in the search. 
there are still jobs out there. Both what companies are seeking and how they're hiring is changing. And again, I want you to understand that the companies you're seeking to join are also experiencing this disruption. And if you layer in the complexities that people are having in their own families and managing their own virtual teams, and you're empathetic about that, um, just know that your positive look and your persistence and your patience will pay off. Um, that's all I had in terms of content to share today. I'd love to hear what questions you have. Um, I'm not seeing any questions right now in the, in the, in the chat box. Um, if you don't have a question, I'm also happy to hear what you might um, have to share in terms of your um, observations or, or thoughts about what you've heard today. Kayla, I'm not seeing any questions. Did you have any comments that you'd like to make today? Uh, no, nothing from me. I did see someone raise their hand. So just reminding people, um, if you do want to make a comment, to type it into the Q&A box. That would be awesome. Thank you. Cindy, I just wanted to make sure you saw a few people are putting it in the chat box instead of the Q&A. Oh, okay. I'm not seeing the chat box yet. Let me see if I can pull that up. Okay, there we go. Thank you. Um, okay, thanks so much for, for pointing that out, Kayla. Um, so one of the questions that's come up is, um, can you talk about leveraging henna hunters? Um, again, I did mention that in March, I had a webinar with our MBA for executive students about webinar, I'm sorry, about um, headhunters. And we had three on that panel and they gave a lot of really wonderful advice. So again, you don't want to be transactional with them either. Um, oftentimes headhunters are people who have long-term relationships and um, they will place people. And then sometimes they become clients of those people and they move again and, you know, they're long-term relationships. So showing up in ways, and as I mentioned earlier, being a credible source for um, other referrals is, is incredibly powerful. Uh, with the headhunters, again, um, they're really needing you to understand, uh, or they're, they're needing to understand not just where you would fit in, but what would be ideal. Because their reputation, as they're recommending their, um, their clients to, to interview candidates, their reputation hinges on the quality of candidates. So for you to be as clear as you can about the types of things that you'd love to do is going to increase the likelihood of you being a great fit for that organization. So um, if you're not ready to kind of formally engage with headhunters today, that's actually okay. You can reach out to people saying that you understand that they're a leader in the space, you'd like to connect, and learn a little bit more about, you know, kind of both what they're working on as well. I always, when I was in, you know, kind of the accounting and finance part of my career, the way I stayed top of mind with recruiters was saying, okay, that's not a job I'm interested in. May I make some suggestions about people who I think you might call? And or saying, what else are you working on? Who else might I know? Because I'm known as one of the things I'm known for is being a connector and being able to kind of put people with the right people. So um, so that is, um, you know, kind of the high level about recruiters. Um, all recruiters aren't the right recruiter for you, for your industry as well. So that's another reason why being specialized and being, being focused is important because you can have informational interviews with recruiters who are, who know your space and they can also give you really feedback about what might be perceived gaps in your application or in your experience that you can actually clean up and focus on and then come back so that they can confidently present you to their clients. Uh, let's see here. Advice for older alums. Um, I'm older, I have an AARP card. There are jobs for us too. 
if you think about the numbers of disruptions that we've lived through, I was having conversations with people in the early parts of um, social distancing and everything, and the supply chain being all kind of kerfuffled. And uh, I was thinking back to, and people are saying, this has never happened before. And I, I reminded them of the 1970s when we had the oil embargo and we had to line up to get gas and you couldn't get gas on any given day. You had to get it based on the number of your license plate. And some of you might be listening to this and saying, oh yeah, I forgot about that. And some of you might be listening to this and saying, what? Um, these disruptions happen all the time. Our track record of thinking through them is, is really powerful. Um, I'm working with uh, another older alum who is doing a focused search in um, marketing arena. And he was seen as being, you know, kind of traditional, too traditional. And he's talking to some of the platform marketers and what's really funny is some of those businesses are younger than his career. And um, basically all he needed to do was translate and show by taking a couple of LinkedIn courses to understand the language, how platform marketers talk about their, their work, uh, to translate and show them that in fact, he does all of those things and has deep experience in all of those things, traditional marketing and sales just talks about it differently. So that's opened a lot of doors up for him in those regards. So again, translating our prior skills um, is really important. The other thing I want to you know, speak to older alums about is, um, and I had this conversation very directly with someone right after the 2008 financial crisis, and they were you know, really upset that they used to make this much money and, and they deserve to make that much money. That's not how capitalism works. Right? You get paid commensurate to the value you bring to an organization. So it's awesome that the market valued you that much then for the things that you did. The market has changed, demand has changed, technology has changed, and that work isn't valued for that. It doesn't create market value for that. You, that your career capital needs to be rejiggered and leveraged differently for you to find new ways to create value. So. Uh, really thinking about how do we translate prior experience and, and what are the opportunities that we would love to be engaged with in the future. Doing that translation is, is of utmost importance to everyone, especially older employees, um, where what we used to do and the experience that we have may not be resonant with, um, with our target employers. I also did, and Kayla, you were on this with me as well, um, a year ago in February, I think it was actually at SOM on a very snowy day, um, we did a webinar with one of our alums from SOM, Mark Friedman, and we were talking about um, the plight of older Americans and, and you know, kind of uh, what we needed to do to, to, to stay resonant and, and how to um, interact with in, intergenerationally um, later on. So that could be an interesting resource for you as well. Um, peeking through the rest of our chat here. Um, I see a question that says, do you think they're a good resource? I think that's referring back to headhunters. That's a good question. It depends on the headhunter. So just as you would be thoughtful about how you might make referrals um, of your own network, I want you to think about headhunters. Some of them are, um, are, are not as, um, they're not as reflective of your brand as you might want them to be. Um, so for you to kind of really think about who's the right person for you um, and, and what referrals um, can you find of them that they are, um, they're good people um, and they reflect your values um, and then they would reflect your brand well, um, that's, it, you know, it's, it's just like anybody else, it depends. So you really want to find people that, um, that you, you appreciate. Um, I mentioned planting seeds, potential roles I'd be interested in. Um, so this idea of planting seeds, the question says, um, for this, you have to mention, do you have to mention potential roles you would be interested in? I'm afraid it might be too pushy for a first off meeting. Um, planting seeds doesn't necessarily mean kind of, um, you know, kind of plotting out the garden and saying, I'm planting the seed and I like this role in three years. Um, it's having that conversation so that it can um, germinate and grow organically over time. So I'm thinking about 
um, making a shift in the future into this area. This is you know, a conversation often that some of the matriculating EMBA students have where they're employed and they're engaged in a program of study and they at or near the end of completion of their program of study and graduation, they might want to move into or pivot into something new. So you don't necessarily want to wait until you've got the diploma to start thinking about networking into the industry or the companies that you'd like to join. You might want to start planting those seeds, developing those relationships, nurturing those relationships over time, learning over time, sharing information back and forth, checking in with people. So that's really what I mean about planting seeds. And then when you are ready and you have kept people up to date with what you've been doing and you have demonstrated by how you've shown up to the relationship that you really do care about them and industry and what they do, um, it's going to be increasingly more likely for you to uh, be invited in to have those doors opened up for you into those new types of roles. So um, it is, again, over time, nothing happens kind of instantaneously. Um, do you think approaching a startup founder directly via email is appropriate to look for opportunities there? Again, my famous graduate school answer, you're never wrong if you say this in a classroom and you guys can probably reflect back to this and, and agree. If you say it depends, you'll never be wrong. So is it appropriate? It depends. If you can share something that they're going to notice and be intrigued by and say yes to, absolutely. Um, I wouldn't though start with email without kind of doing, doing some research and figuring out what is it that you could say or do or acknowledge them for that would increase the likelihood of them saying yes to you? Uh, you know, an example, if you saw them present on a webinar um, or on a, a, on a stage at a conference, or if you read an article that they wrote or saw them in the news and something that they said was compelling to you and you can tell them you know, kind of why it was important to you and ask to um, acknowledge them for it and, and ask to be connected so that you can keep up with their, uh, their content, um, that might be a first step that gets them, has them be aware of you. And then you might, you know, as a second step after they've said yes to that, maybe LinkedIn connection um, or reply to that acknowledgement, then you can say, I'm going to, you know, kind of follow up and um, would it be okay for me to contact you again um, after I've, you know, kind of, if, if you've maybe asked them for other resources to read or learn about, then you could actually, you know, kind of ask for a meeting. But I'd like you to think about small yeses. Um, you don't um, kind of propose marriage on a first date. So think about this as a longer term relationship and, and ask for things that it's easy for people to say yes to. Um, they're not necessarily going to open, open up them, their schedule for an hour long meeting with you. Uh, but if you ask for things that are small and bite sized, um, it, it makes it much easier for people and more pal palatable for people to say yes. Um, it's been difficult to get past first round interviews for senior finance. Um, is there any general advice or introspection you'd recommend to break through this wall? Um, you know, that's a great question and I'm conscious of our time. So um, I'll have this be the last question and, um, and uh, we'll also invite you to have a private coaching conversation with me if you'd like to. And again, I'm sorry we didn't. There's a lot of really great questions today. We didn't end a few minutes early. Um, I love that you're getting the first interviews. Uh, so we need to actually kind of do a little bit of, um, you know, a thoughtful um, reconnaissance about what specifically is missing. So there's a rapport, there's a connection that's not happening in the interview. So that the doors open is awesome, right? It's hard for people when they don't actually even get that first interview. What's happening in the interview is, is a piece that maybe your stories that you're sharing aren't as resonant with that target company, maybe you haven't done the translation in ways that is inspiring confidence that you would really fit in and that you would really understand. So that's the place where I'd suggest doing some more work. And um, again, if you'd like to have a private coaching conversation with me, the link is right here in terms of how you uh, log in. Um, I would be delighted to kind of work with you on this a little bit more. 
Um, with that, I think we might have actually gotten through all the questions. And Kayla, thank you for sharing the Mark, web uh, the Mark Friedman webinar link. Um, thanks so much for spending the time with me today. I look forward to continuing this conversation. We are planning on having additional career webinars in July and August. So be on the lookout for those announcements. And um, I'm cheering you on. There are jobs out there. The perfect one is out there for you. And um, I'm confident that in time, um, you're going to find it. You'll find each other. Thanks again, Kayla, for uh, helping us out here today. And everyone be well.